Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. Welcome to Swipe. This week we're in Sweden for a Scandinavia special. Stay tuned to find out why this place is a hot spot for startup talent. We go inside one of the country's biggest tech exports, a name we've all heard of. Would you let your company microchip you? We're at the offices implementing or implanting some unique working practices. And we're staying in Scandinavia for our games review too. We've got Angry Birds and a hunt for dinosaurs. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we're in Stockholm because after Silicon Valley, this city has more multi-million pound startups than anywhere else in the world. It's where Spotify and Mojang were born. Now investors see it as a hotspot to find the next big name in tech. And its neighbor, Denmark, isn't doing too badly either. It's been named a digitally connected champion. So what's the secret to Scandinavia's tech successes? Angela's been finding out. Employees with no job titles, companies sharing knowledge and a free university education. Well, these strategies are obviously working. International venture capitalists have been pouring money into Swedish startups in a big way. The country's technology industry attracted nearly £560 million of investment last year. Spotify, the world's biggest music streaming site, is just one of the success stories. I think that you need to have a really strong vision that you care deeply about as an entrepreneur because you're going to you know, run into many brick bats and pitfalls and people who don't believe in you. Um, and the second thing is to be, to be stubborn and grind it out and dig it out. You know, we talk now about Spotify being big and successful. Daniel had to go out and tell that same story time and time and time again before we began to get momentum. And Spotify is not alone in the Swedish success story. Last year, Mojang, the game development studio behind Minecraft, was bought by Microsoft for one and a half billion pounds. And King, the makers of the iPhone game Candy Crush, floated in New York, valuing the company at more than four and a half billion pounds, making it the largest ever IPO for a mobile gaming company. In the past decade, this country of nine million people has beaten off more competition than everywhere else in Europe. And some of the businesses we've spoken to here say it has a lot to do with the organisational setup. Especially in startups, I think a lot of people have realised that we move quicker and make better decisions when you have less kind of management. So here at MAG we have no managers at all, so people are self-organising. And basically if someone is not performing, try to figure out why, because we have only hired really great people, so there's it's nothing wrong with the people. Try to figure out how you can make them work better. Job titles aside, many Scandinavians also say a free undergraduate education helps the startup scene, giving its youth the chance to borrow money for a business venture rather than a student loan. But the Swedish market also has its challenges. If you start a company in the United States, you have a home market of 250 million people, or in, in, in France or in Germany. So that's the first sort of challenge. How do you go global? quick enough. The next challenge is, if you're going to do that, you usually need more money than if you roll it out in your own country, because you're going to go into France, you don't know anything about France, then you're going to go into Germany, and you don't know anything about Germany. It takes more money. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Now this is Epicenter. It's described as Stockholm's first house of innovation. Check this out. We're used to seeing ATMs, right? This is a digital currency BTM, a Bitcoin teller machine. This whole complex is full of loads of different companies working under one roof. So you've got large corporations like Microsoft right down to one person startups. And they've got some pretty unique working practices here. A lot of these guys have got microchips planted under the skin to use as passes to get in and out of the building. And this is that microchipping in action. Here with me now is Philip, who's an intern here at Epicenter, and Chai. He's Hello. about to implant a microchip. How long will this chip remain under Philip's skin? It, it's forever. As long as I want it there. As long as he wants it there. What um, if you want to leave the company after next week? 
Well, the chip itself isn't programmed that way. You pro program all the appliances around it. So Philip can actually use this if he has an electronic lock for his door at home. Or uh, my cell like phone or any, mm -hmm. anything that is NFC compatible. You ready for this? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do it. it. You take a deep breath and exhale. Ooh. And we're done. That's pretty quick. Yeah. How did that feel? It feels sort of like getting a techno shot from the doctor, pretty much. Painful? Not more than You took than it well, that. Philip. You took it well. Well, with me now is Patrick Mesterton, the CEO and co-founder here at Epicenter. Was it a bit controversial to bring in the option of microchipping? Not really. It's 100% voluntarily. And uh, people here at Epicenter, which is a house of innovation, they like to explore new technologies. And that's why some people here have done it. Did you have some criticism, though? Yeah, of course. Some criticism, I think, is unavoidable. What kind of criticism? Uh, we've had some Facebook posts and on social media where Same people... One, well, they're sort of questioning uh, man versus machine okay. and, and sort of if it's voluntarily or not. And how do you respond to those critics? No, we try to, of course, explain and, uh, and show uh, through media and, uh, and what we do here that, that this is part of uh, the house of innovation and that you can try and test new technology. Now, this week on Swipe, we've been looking at the secrets to Scandinavia's tech successes. If you were to sum those up in your personal view, how would you do that? Now, I think there's two things that are very, very true for Scandinavia. One is that it's a very collaborative environment. So helping each other, helping other tech companies, the knowledge sharing and things do is very strong. Do the big companies really do that? Yeah, the they, way secrets to each other? Well, I wouldn't say secrets, but they're very sort of helpful and keen in making sure that others can enjoy the same success. And that's also why places like Epicenter is done, in order to get people to collaborate around these ideas. Mm -hmm. And the second? And the second one is, of course, that Sweden is a very small country, only 9 million inhabitants. When you develop new concepts, you have to think scale and go global. So uh, helping each other here, uh, sharing knowledge, working in a collaborative environment, thinking global, I think is a couple of those uh, main reasons. Brilliant, Patrick. Thanks for chatting to us. You're welcome. Now, tech success in Scandinavia also comes in the form of video games. So for this week's games review, we asked the creative director at Rovio to run through some of his favorites. And in case you didn't know, Rovio is the company behind those little Angry Birds. All right, uh, so the first game is called Angry Birds on the Pig Struction, uh, and it's available right now in Canada in soft launch on iOS. It's going back to basics, back to the roots where it all started. It's spruced up graphics, so it's very much inspired by Toons, the TV series that we have. Um, and so it's very lively, very animated, very colorful game. The, the levels are expanded to have several rooms, so you have several slingshots per level. And it's just super fun, uh, lots of action. Uh, definitely the best Angry Birds game to date. My second game is called The Hunter Primal. Um, it's developed uh, actually close by here by another Swedish studio and it's a sequel to the game that's called Just the Hunter. Um, it's kind of a hunting simulator but there's a twist to this one where you instead of hunting uh, normal animals in, on, on, in a normal forest you're actually hunting dinosaurs. It's, it's a pretty hard game uh, so you need to be ready for, for that uh, otherwise if you're into these kind of a hunting simulation games uh, it might be for you. The third game is another mobile game. Uh, it's available on iOS, no iPhone and iPads. Uh, it's called The Sailor's Dream, and it's made by a Swedish studio called Simogo. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful game. Um, it's hard to describe it, actually. It's almost not a game at all. It's more of an interactive story. It's, it's very uh, surreal. Uh, and you're kind of going through these different places on the sea, uh, going through the stories and, and discovering things, what's happened uh, throughout the story. Well, that's it for our Scandinavia special from here in Sweden. We'll be back with more Swipe next week. And until then, you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com, and our YouTube playlist. See you again. Bye-bye.